Hey Eagle fans, I'm Thomas Mott. Welcome into Philadelphia Eagles Now. Before we start today's video, I wanna know who you think is to blame for the Eagles' tough, tough loss to the Pittsburgh Steelers yesterday. Let me know who it is down below in the comments section. All right, so as we always do on a Monday after an Eagles loss, which has been a uh, common occurrence here on Philadelphia Eagles Now, unfortunately, and yesterday is no different. We gotta go through the overreactions I'm seeing both on Twitter, in my DMs, on my timeline, on the YouTube comments. I mean, there's a lot of people overreacting to yesterday's um, loss, and so we're gonna say which reactions are true and which ones are, in fact, an overreaction. So, we'll start with the big one. Jim Schwartz lost the game. The Eagles defensive coordinator is to blame for Philadelphia losing. 100% true. I mean, this is all on Jim Schwartz. And the worst part about it is, if you would have even had a, a mediocre day by the Eagle defense, not a, you know, a, a dominating day by the Eagle defense, which they can have, by, by the way, they're a good unit. You have a mediocre day by the Eagles defense. The Eagles offense was so darn good, they should have easily won this football game. That's the worst part of yesterday. That's a game the Eagles could have stolen on the road against a very good Steelers team. And yet instead, they have 38 points, 367 yards, 231 through the air, and also 136 on the ground, and only got to Big Ben once. That was the real thing. This is the number one team in terms of total sacks in the National Football League. Only one time where they're able to get to Ben Roethlisberger, who was fantastic. I mean, he was lights out. I think uh, the Steelers were over 70% on third down, and the real issue was is that the Eagles had no answer for those Pittsburgh wide receivers. Juju was held in check, but Chase Claypool was not. And the worst part about Chase Claypool balling out is, I told you guys the Eagles should have looked at him in the second round, but instead they wanted Jalen Hurts. Four picks later, the Steelers got Chase Claypool. Which would you rather have right now, Chase Claypool or Jalen Hurts? That's a pretty easy answer. The biggest and most egregious error that everyone is talking about today, and it is Jim Schwartz's fault, the fact that you had one-on-one -on -one with a linebacker, Nathan Gary, on Chase Claypool in a crucial third down in the fourth quarter that resulted in a touchdown. But if you would have gotten a stop, Philadelphia has the football down two, less than three minutes to go, multiple timeouts. You could have easily won this football game. That's what I want to emphasize here. The Eagles should have won this football game. They could have won this football game. And it's the worst part about a Monday because there are times you get blown out, like the Rams game. No no point in the, saying the Eagles should have won. They shouldn't have. The defense was really just that bad. The offense was bad, too. This one, the defense was bad, but the offense was right there. And they they just, oh, it's just, it's, it, it's painful. It's painful. It's a painful, painful day. Schwartz has a lot of ground to go ahead and make up. He's going to lose his job at the end of the year if this defense does not get better because, yes, they're bad at linebacker, and, yes, they have some injuries, but they have elite talent on both the front and back end, and they should be able to not give up more than 38 points, not even get up 38 points in the first place. Drop a like if the Eagles should have won that game. Is that how you feel today? That's why the Eagles should have won that game. That's what's so excruciating for me on a Monday. So drop a like if you agree Philadelphia should have won. How about the, the next uh, uh, overreaction? Travis Fulgham is a star. Travis Fulgham, you remember the name now, number 13, the old Nelson Aguilar number. He's balling out. He balled out yesterday. I'm not going to overreact to this, but I'm going to say be patient, okay? He was fantastic yesterday. 10 catches, 13 targets, 152 yards and a touchdown. He was the most elite Eagle wide receiver in terms of total performance we've seen in a very, very long time, but you got to be patient here. Now, I picked him up my fantasy league because I'm expecting him to turn into a breakout star for Philadelphia, but I say be patient because it's so darn early. This is a practice squad guy, a guy who's been cut multiple times, a guy who wasn't even on the active roster to start the season, even though the Eagles still had wide receiver issues. So we got to see a little bit more. I know he had the one catch in the first week, and then, of course, he balled out last week. If he can do this for the next couple of weeks here, I'm all in. I'm buying into the idea that, that he's a star. Again, I expect him to be. I expect him to continue to get playing time because all the top three wide receivers continue to be out. I mean, how much longer for Jackson and Jeffrey and Rager? But if you could have Fulgham do what he did yesterday for the remainder of the season, this offense will continue to hum, and this offense can start to scare people, even though right now it doesn't scare a lot of people. So I love Fulgham. I got my, on my fancy team. Yesterday was fantastic. Just be a little more patient. I want to see a couple more games. That way this isn't a fluke. If he can do this next week and the week after, I'm all in, and the Eagles might have found the most unlikely candidate for his future star wide, wide receiver. The numbers he put up yesterday are absolutely incredible. Shout out to Foley. I mean, this is huge to have Carson Wentz an actual wide receiver target, not named Greg Ward, who's a former backup quarterback. Next overreaction. There are no moral victories. You've seen this one all over Twitter, people, including um, Elliot Shore Parks from 94.1 uh, WIP saying that, that Sunday was a moral victory for Philadelphia. And everyone says, no, 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 there are no moral victories. The Eagles lost. Overreaction. Yesterday was a moral victory, and if it's not for the entire team, it was at least for Carson Wentz and the offense. Now, the stat line will say, oh, he threw two more picks. Oh, he was sacked five times. But in reality, that was the best Carson Wentz football game we've seen in a very, very long time, dating back to last season towards the end during that four-game stretch. Wentz was fantastic. I mean, he was really, really good. I know he missed some throws. I know he forced some stuff down the field when he shouldn't have, and he had a couple of uh, potential touchdowns that went right through the hands of John Hightower, but still... 
He was great. He was fantastic and shows. Listen, even though he was sacked five times, the protection was pretty darn good. I thought, you know, he holds on the ball a little bit too long. That's why those sacks are ending, end up happening. But overall, when Wentz has a running game, which he had at times with Miles Sanders, even though Sanders didn't average a lot after that big game, but when Wentz has a half-decent offensive line and at least competent players at wide receiver, a.k.a. Travis Fulgham, he can be a great quarterback and still is a top 10 quarterback. So the more victory there is for the offense. The offense has been the real struggle. Defense has been up and down the entire year, and you got bad defense yesterday. We know the defense can pick it up and play well. We didn't really know if the, the offense would ever get to that point, and yesterday proved it. That was like the top defense, one of the top five defenses in the NFL, and Wentz went up and down the field, even though Zach Ertz wasn't doing anything. And, and of course, J.J. I think Whiteside does nothing. It was Wentz. Fulgham, Sanders, that was it, and it was almost enough to beat the undefeated now Pittsburgh Steelers. So I do believe it was a moral victory. I think it, it, it looks bright for Philadelphia in terms of winning the NFC East. We'll talk more about that in just a second, but winning the NFC East and going forward with a competent offense and defense that can compete against the best teams in the NFL – Pittsburgh is one of those teams. Do you believe in moral victories? I'll leave it up to you. Why down below for yes and down below for no? Had they won, then we don't have to worry about this. But you know, I think today or yesterday was a uh, was a moral victory for Philadelphia. Next week's going to be a little different. Now, they proved that they can play with the Niners. They can play with the Steelers. Can they play with Baltimore and Lamar Jackson? That's going to be the real test there. The Week 6 home matchup. Fans will be in the stands in Philadelphia. If you want to get your uh, head on the betting on that one, we have a great uh, sponsor and partner here at Chat Sports. It is BetUS. So chatsports.com forward slash Eagles bet is the place to go. Use the promo code Eagles125. You'll get 125% deposit bonus whenever you first sign up. Turn $100 into $225 when you bet on the Eagles. So again, chatsports.com forward slash bet or excuse me, Eagles bet. Promo code is Eagles125. Final overreaction here is Dallas is running away with the division. An absolute overreaction. And this leads us into a, a broader topic on what happened on Sunday with Dak Prescott and the Cowboys. So they did win. And you probably saw what happened with Dak Prescott, which we don't like the Cowboys. We hate the Cowboys. Wins is better than Dak. But that injury you never want to see. So thoughts and prayers up to Dak. That's just a brutal thing to have happen. Dallas did win, which stinks. I thought the Giants could hold on and get a, a, a victory there. But Philadelphia's still in this. And I don't. Want, I know people are going to comment, well, the NFC East is so bad, just tank. Like, there's no point in winning this. No, there is. If you win the NFC East, you get a home playoff game. And we've seen, if you can get a home playoff game in the NFL, you have a chance to win and advance to the divisional round and then the well, NFC Championship game. Like, you are a couple of wins away from going to a Super, a Super Bowl. If you're hot, get in the postseason and win. So I'm all for them winning. The NFC East is still wide open. I know Baltimore next week is a tough one. Then you have Giants, Dallas, Bye, and Giants. There's a very real chance they could go 3-1 and one over their next five weeks. And, of course, the bye week, no one wins. But it looks like the Eagles could really pick up some ground on the NFC East here over the next couple of weeks. And if they somehow pull out a big win against Baltimore, 4-0 and the next five weeks sounds pretty darn good. Philadelphia, the moral loss again. They might be peaking at just the right time. Dallas's next five games with Andy Dalton at quarterback. Tough matchup against the Cardinals. Monday Night Football, I mean, a lot of eyes on that one. Washington... And then they're really scared there. Obviously, November 1st against Philadelphia is, is going to be huge. But then they have Pittsburgh. And then later on, they have uh, some more tough matchups. Like, um, I believe they have the Saints. And I believe they have um, the Packers. And they have, what's, what's one more team that they have? Oh, the Niners later on when the Niners are healthy. So the Eagle schedule is tough. But Dallas's is very hard as well. And so hang in there, right? It stinks. But I think Philadelphia can go on a little bit of a run here, especially maybe if they can pull off the Baltimore win. They can be ahead of the NFC East going into the Dallas matchup in November 1st. You win that game, and then you're a couple of games ahead of Dallas with the tiebreaker as well. There you go. I wanted to just jump into all the overreactions because there always are some. And so I appreciate you guys and everyone who watches this on our channel. If you guys like just at sports in general, go ahead and subscribe to our main channel, uh, Chat Sports, uh, here on YouTube. We're almost at 200,000 subs. We're like 600 subs away. So go ahead and subscribe over there. They cover the NBA. They do the NFL. I'm on there sometimes. We do a lot of broad National League and National Football League talks. So go ahead and sub. Help us get to 200,000 subs. Again, all time we have for today here on Philadelphia Eagles now. A tough loss. It stinks. It still burns. Turn right around. Maybe pull an upset off against the Ravens. Get your season back on track. Philadelphia is at least the offense is looking good. Happy Travis Fulgham Day as he was fantastic today. All time we have for today on Philadelphia Eagles Now. I'm your host, Thomas Mott, signing off. Enjoy the rest of your day.